Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for December 3rd, 2021. All right, so we have a special day here today. Um, again, Brian Besco with Twisted Sage Studios. If you haven't been here before, we are going to do a quick, simple meditation to go into the heart space, which is what we do every time we begin. But also just going to say hello to everybody who's here live on the chat. And of course, we've got people from all over the place here. And thank you all for being here. Australia, Albuquerque. Um, and so if you are here live, please do go to the chat side. Uh, we have some wonderful people that are here that are very knowledgeable about the tensor tools as well that can assist. And if you have questions during the process here, just put your questions under the questions tab. And otherwise, if you are watching afterwards or on YouTube, you are welcome to join us live as well. Because sometimes when we join live and we have some of the new products, we also offer um, discounts for those who do he um, come here live today. So for those of you who are here live, um, please do check at the top of the chat and you will see that there is a discount code for the new rings that we are introducing today. And you all have first access to these rings. Um, and if you order during our show, we'll get them shipped out to you today. So, all right, going into the heart space. Oh, sorry, I'm still reading chat. From the chilly west, from the chilly coast of Maine, North Carolina, New York City, Colorado. Yeah, it's good to see you all here. Hey, Samson. All right, so here we go. We're going to go into the heart space. Get rid of my gum. I silenced my phone, but it's on Bluetooth, so it's picking up the speaker. We'll shut that off. Okay, here we go. So we're going to go into that sacred space of the heart, moving the consciousness from the head back into the heart. We do it in a three breath technique. Make it simple. You can do it with just simply a word or a single breath. But here is the version that we teach. So it's closing your eyes, putting your attention onto your physical heart. And imagine within your heart is your light, your soul's fire. Now imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth and breathing in that light, that energy of the earth up through the feet and into the heart. This is, a, this is to ground into and with the earth. Next, we connect to the heart of creation, source, soul, creator, God, however you see and say that. Breathe in that light of creation into the heart. The third breath, breathing in from both earth and creation, bringing both energies together within you. You are then grounded, connected, and you are in the heart space, moving the consciousness from the head into the heart. <clears throat> oh my goodness, there's some people from Hawaii, Southern California. I need to get to Hawaii. We totally need to get a a um, workshop set up in Hawaii soon. All right, hey Samson, ha happy fantastic Friday! Epic eclipse tomorrow, new moon in Sagittarius. Very cool. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot about this one as well. Okay, so um, let's see. We'll start out. I have a question from. Uh, somebody on email so we will begin there let me mute my computer too all right so yes we have um, you're always welcome to email in questions if you're watching this afterwards and you just don't are not able to make it live you can totally email in the questions. And also, if you're watching on YouTube and you're wondering how to find out about these, go to twistedsage.com. 
subscribe to our newsletters and we send you out a newsletter with the link to this live. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Apologies. Still um, clearing out from allergies. It's been a crazy allergy fall here. Okay. Any suggestion for people in terminal stages such as stage four cancer to facilitate some comfort, easy transition, also for their family members to keep the home or hospice um, to keep to hold that space, or else some suggested reciting Lord's prayers and, and psalms. Um, so we've actually been working with a few people recently, you know, and some friends that have recently crossed over. And, you know, what we're seeing is the new On the Wings of Talk is phenomenal. It is allowing people, not only is it bringing in the peace, but those who are ready to transition, it is bringing them back to, let's say, what we're calling the zero point of the soul. It's bringing you back into who you are. And when this occurs, and we're going to do this today in a meditation, when this occurs, it, it, it leaves, it, it harmonizes, it um, turns all of those unfinished businesses, um, you know, that you have for lifetimes, it transforms all of that unfinished business, all the oaths, vows, contracts, promises, soul contracts, um, is just well as, you know, your own emotions of needing to stay behind for family, friends, whatever, your dog. It's, it's transforming all of that when you come into that zero point space. And it allows for then that peacefulness. And on a soul level, I really feel that this allows also people who, who instead of having to come back for another round on earth, on this version of earth and come back for another round of, of then going through a life of doing the release work and the clearing work, so that at the end of the next lifetime, they can transition or ascend. Um, they have their realization. It allows them at this point in time to release all of that, come back into that zero point space so that they can step away free and clear. And then they can still choose to come back around. But um, it allows them to step away free and clear. And so that brings a lot of peace. And so also if you have the on the wings of talk, in in the home and this entire space it's also an environmental tool and it covers you know you know that city block area you now it expands past the house past the home so it covers everybody like let's say if it's in a medical facility it covers everybody in there as well and so it's it's just holding that space for that to occur and it brings through a lot of peace um connection to your higher self all of that so you know if you are working with somebody who has uh, stage four cancer has a terminal illness the on the wings of talk is a phenomenal one for not only them but everybody around them because usually it's the caretakers who who have you know a really difficult time and so it's just it's it's a good thing for everybody um, so yeah, that's that's for a physical tool. That is what I would suggest. Um, you know, because it's it's an amazing time right now for some of the people that we were seeing that are transitioning, and that they are not going in the old traditional ways of like, let's say, one of our friends here recently, just two weeks ago, <clears throat> um, she used COVID to transition, and. Um, she, the death doors were never open for her. Usually, you, um, you know, the death doors are open and then you choose to release the body and you go through those doors. For her, we feel it was more like an ascension, but she left the body and she took the body. I'm sorry, she left the body. So she basically did not go through the death doors and she just took off. Um, you know, it's not becoming a ghost or wayward or whatever. It is her not going through the old process of going through the death doors. Um, I feel it's kind of like the ascension. And 
you know, we know that many people in this particular lifetime will have this ascension, whatever that means, that they, um, that they step forward and onward. And so, you know, the goal for me and right now in creating the tools is to assist people to do this, but stay embodied to, to have the realizations, um, to be a master, but still stay here. Anyway, yeah, that's the new paradigm. The old stuff used to be all the clearing work that we used to do is what you know the tools used to be about. But to me anymore, it's it's gone. It's gone beyond that. Okay. All right. So and that's only my own personal journey. We hold the space and the tools. The tools do whatever it is for you in the highest and best as determined by the soul. So I'm just kind of reflecting on my own journey here. Okay. To the questions now that we have on hand. Um, actually, I'm going back to the chat real quick. Um, anchored on anchored the on the wings to talk to my husband's work. The next day, all the chaos makers were being called out on their shenanigans, told to change your leave, and the gruff boss had been displaying compassion. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And we'd love to hear any of the things that, that happen with you guys. I mean, this is phenomenal. Thank you for sharing this. Um, love for you guys to put that on the website. Uh, just go to the product, go to the on the wings to talk. And you can just copy and paste right where you put there onto there um, because, you know, the more people can hear from others who have had experiences, profound experiences with the tools, you know, obviously the better because then they can allow the profound experiences as well. Um, all right. So we're going over here to the question side. Uh, let's see. Can we coat the copper tools to keep them shiny and not affect the energetics? Yes, so you can certainly put um, any kind of coating on the the tools, and it's not going to affect them energetically. Um, you know, like our cell phone tabs, for instance. Our cell phone tabs actually have that coating of Echopoxy on them, um, as do any of our tools that have the Echopoxy. So you can use an epoxy base um, to coat the tools. Some things don't really hold up if you have... Uh, Gosh, I'm still trying to understand it because I have an activator that I mount on the hood of my car and I totally dip that in Echopoxy. And so it's completely covered, but yet it always patinas and it patinas fast. Um, but of course, you know, it's sitting out um, driving. I think what happens is it gets small cracks in the epoxy and then the moisture is able to get within there. Um, but epoxy and... Um, Gosh, if you look up on, on the internet, there are some ways that you can coat copper with different styles of epoxies, polyurethanes, I believe it is, not sure. You'd have to look that one up, but it won't affect the energetics of the tools. Uh, let's see. Diane, if someone wears a tensor tool in the ascension chamber during the process, does the tool change? Would the chamber process change tools without a person in the chamber if the tool was above the floor? Okay, so let me address the first part of the question here. So if someone wears a tensor tool in one of the ascension chambers, does the tool change? No, um, not traditionally. That, that doesn't happen. But with this new wisdom field that is being within the, the newer chambers, the, the pyramid chambers, um, the pyramid ascension chambers, that wisdom energetics does have the possibility to change the energetics of the tools. Um, so it is possible that you can step into like the pyramid chamber with the intention of shifting your tools to be in your highest and best um, and bringing through everything that can support that. Um, you know, and actually that's what I've been doing with, like my pendant um, is just shifting those energetics, just going in the heart space, being there, having that wisdom energetics, which is in that wings of talk pendant um, and just asking for all of the energetics that are in the most support for you in the moment to come in. 
Um, you know, and you can do that every day when you wake up. You know, just have your wisdom ring there with whatever pendants or tools you're wearing. Go into the heart space. Ask that they carry the energetics that are the most beneficial for you for that day. Um, because these wisdom rings are allowing that shift to take place. It's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like how we could program water with a regular tensor field. But now with the wisdom rings, it's, um, we're seeing pretty amazing things happen. You know, I think I told the story here a week or two ago about the person who had one of some Sperling's rings and used a wisdom ring, and they were able to shift the vibration of one of the older 144 megahertz tensor rings that Slim had made. Um, so the second part of this question, would the chamber process change tools without a person in the chamber if the tool was above the floor level? So, um, so I'm assuming what you mean is to be able to put one of your tools, like a pendant um, or a ring, inside of the chamber um, and ask for that to change. Yes, I mean, if you're using like the, the ascension pyramids or the wisdom ring, same thing, because it's carrying that energetics of the wisdom, <clears throat> that you can simply ask for that to shift and change. I mean, you could do this with a crystal. You do it with your water, which we're going to get to here. Because um, we're going to talk about the new water rings today. Uh, and, Brian, I very much like the graphic on your shirt. Haha, <laughs> do you know of a template that I could get to enlarge on to enlarge on paint on the wall outside my house. So the Metatron's Cube, there's a lot of versions of the Metatron's Cube is what the question's about. Um, I really like this particular version. There's some versions out there that just feel kind of funny. Mm, you know, so just feel into the geometry because a lot of people will try to recreate this, but they put their own twist on it. And then it's not really as much sacred geometry and also depends on the intentions behind the, the creator of that um, different geometry. So no, I'm not sure where you would find this particular one at. This t-shirt I bought at $6 t-shirts on the internet. So this is a $6 t-shirt um, and that's the name of the website, I think, $6 t-shirts. Um, so, but yeah, just do a Google search and there are a lot of images that people have out there for free. <clears throat> See none. Even if the light column of a tensor ring cannot reach all parts of the house, as in the tensor field generators, isn't it actually considered to have reached the whole house as a result of reaching the ether as the principle in water? Okay, so in all actuality, the tensor rings, the tensor fields, and the tensor field generator are a quantum field that cannot be disturbed, stopped, slowed down, diminished by physical objects. So you can put a tensor field generator in a Faraday cage and the, the, the tensor field doesn't care. So the tensor field, if you have a tensor field generator anywhere in the home, it will go through the wall, through all solid objects. Um, so yeah, if you have the tensor field generator in the home, um, it covers, it'll expand out to cover you know, the neighborhood or the miles or however many that's, however large of a sphere of influence that particular generator covers, it will cover that no matter where the generator is placed. Um, and then, you know, and part of the question there was about it reaching the ether as in the principle of water. So the principle of water is basically if you have a giant container and you put a small ring under it, and that ring can actually charge all the water in that larger container because that water all speaks to each other. It all connects and intermingles all that water that's within that container. Um, and so that's kind of the, the principle of the water, and which is very similar to another principle of like if you have, you know, a bracelet or a pendant on, um, even though these don't, you know, radiate out in all directions, as this connects into your field, your field is what radiates out in all directions. So it's actually your field, your, um, you know, we're seeing it's about 10 to 12 feet out that your field, you know, and that's just a generalization because there's a lot of different fields that we carry. Um, but just as a generalization, we see like 10 to 12 feet out 
where your field affects that environment around you. And again, that's just a generalization because there's a lot of different fields that we carry and that we can work with. Um, let's see, Victoria. And Brian, not a question, but wanted to leave a small update for the group. Just got my on the wings of talk, and wow, what a powerful magnetic energy. Once I picked it up, it was almost like I wouldn't let me put it down. So different from the chalice rings, much more delicate. Uh, mm, thank you, Victoria. I feel you feeling that very much. It's, you know, that, that energy, it is an amazing energy. It's so flipping powerful. But yeah, it is delicate. It's, it's, it's gentle. It's peaceful. Um, but oh, so very powerful. Matthias, does on the wings to talk pendant need to be electroplated again after the copper comes off? So, you know, we've been noticing this, especially like Brenda. Brenda wore her on the wings to talk pendant against her skin and has had it on since, you know, and this was one of the prototypes and then even sleeps with it and everything and has had it on and on the skin this entire time and it is gotten super dark so you can still do a a quick dip into an apple you know into like a vinegar salt solution um, rinse it off and you can use a fine gauge steel wool to lightly touch it up to just brick to just kind of polish it you don't want to scrub it because that can take the plating off so with the electroplating, um, you know, it, it's just like the the regular wings of talk or the or the key pendants. Um, the on the wings of talk pendant. It is something that if you do wear the plating off, or if you end up trying to scrub it and the plating comes off, we totally will electroplate these for free. You just send it back in. Um, we'll charge a postage to send it back. But the plating, we will clean it, um, polish it and replayed it for you for no charge. Um, so, you know, we, we do have that guarantee on them. You just pay a postage. So, um, yeah, so we are happy to electroplate those for you. And, um, you know, mine, I just had to get a new one here last, or this morning, because this was my original one, which is still pretty darn bright and shiny, but I had a friend made this for me yesterday um, and I put on to a leather strap as a prototype, you know, yesterday my shop foreman and I yesterday morning were like, oh man, it'd be fun to put these on leather. And then I ran into a friend in Sturgis, South Dakota and I was out riding the motorcycle and he whipped that up for me. So kind of exciting. We might consider making those in a little bit more of a dainty way. Um, Mika, if I add silver versions, if I add silver versions of the rings like the regeneration or chalice rings to my pyramid, Will it add a different energy? Are the pyramids updated for silver? Hmm. So the silver, you know, like the silver chalice ring, um, it's a lot crisper, cleaner, pure energy that comes through than the copper version for the chalice. Um, so basically you can add, uh, and I'm just kind of looking at that too, you know, and to me, it doesn't feel like it is going to do a huge shift by adding the silver um, alchemist tools to the pyramid. You know, like the quantum grid points and the, the little ascension grid pyramid that has the coil in it. If you add the silver rings to that, you can definitely feel that as it radiates out. But as far as like one of the ascension pyramids and you add the silver to it, I feel like that's just going to get um, thrown into the soup um, that you won't really notice a tangible shift with the silver, with the larger ascension pyramids. Um, and so as far as the, are the pyramids updated for silver, basically the silver is simply holding, um, it's allowing the field to be just a little bit crisper and cleaner, like I say, just in some of these newer frequencies and not all of them. Um, definitely the chalice. The chalice is the one that we really noted the difference. 
of the silver versus the copper for the energetics of that. Um, so the, the pyramids themselves, I feel, are actually kind of holding that crisper, cleaner light because of what they are in their totality, all their geometries, all their parts, pieces, and, and the structure, everything. That I feel that that is already in that highest aspects of the energy that could be held there. Um, so I don't feel that there's an update for the silver for the pyramids. Um, I feel that they already hold that energetics. And again, the silver is just simply the, the material that seems to allow that chalice ring to come through a little bit crisper, cleaner. Uh, Brenda, I've wore the regeneration cuff for so long, and just lately I can't seem to wear it and wondering why that would happen. That is interesting. You know, we, it seems like at times we grow out of the tools, out of the specific frequencies. Um, and a question, Brenda, is yours copper? I know that with the, with the copper tools, I went through a time where almost a year where I could no longer wear copper. It had to be silver, everything. Um, oh yeah, and the regeneration is the other one that the silver actually, okay, and so Brenda says it is the silver. You know, okay, so then, then that would be, I'm assuming would be the energetics. Now, when we made the regeneration, the golden fire, all of those, we were seeing that they were such a high, energetics for where we were at at the time that I didn't think we would ever be able to outgrow those but it's totally a possibility um, that you have outgrown that one a little bit so what my thoughts to you Brenda with this would be to and you don't have to have a wisdom ring to do this you can simply connect with the energetics of the wisdom ring and I think we did an attunement or a meditation here on one of the 50 questions Fridays. And it's always listed under the 50 questions Fridays on YouTube. Um, Amber goes through and timestamps everything. So if you can find where we did that um, attunement with the wisdom ring, if you do not own one, um, if you do own the wisdom ring, then just take your bracelet, the wisdom ring, go into the heart space and ask for that energetic to shift for you. Um, and I would do that and then see how that goes because, um, you know, I'm almost feeling that the way that we are growing and expanding right now that we can still outgrow some of these tools and we really were meant to, these tools are meant to be space holders, training wheels, um, to, to get us through. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, yeah. That's, that's about the best I could say, Brenda, is to shift the energetics of it. Renard, can you go into a little more detail on the Harmonized Wisdom prototype rings? Just got mine and slept with it on my middle finger, and whoa. <laughs> okay, so under the prototype page, which we opened up the prototype page now to, to everybody, um, we only had a very few people who did the prototype subscription program. And to you, I thank you very much for those who participated in that. Um, but we we did open up the prototype page where you can buy, purchase the tools there to everybody now. Um, and under there, we had some harmonizer rings. These harmonizer rings were intended to go on top of a coil pendant. And it was going to be like the Dr. Dream pendant that we used to make. Um, it, named after my good friend, Dr. Dream, Mark Peebler, and it would have a, uh, a ring, the coil, and then the infinity. So we were going to try to recreate that with these harmonizer rings, but it just, it wasn't to be. So I had a whole bag of these harmonizer rings, and they're really light gauge, and, and they're still, you know, you can still feel them physically, but I wanted to boost up the energetics, so I brought in that energetics of the wisdom ring into those little harmonizer rings. 
Now, so now then it contains, it's like that field of the wisdom ring is there and that field of, the, of that, or sorry, the field of that harmonizer ring is right there with the ring, the finger ring. I'm just using this for example. And then that harmonizer, or sorry, harmonizer ring, it's a finger ring, and then that wisdom field comes in and it just permeates the entire field. Um, and it's not like it creates layers, but it's like they come through together. So the harmonizer and the wisdom we're seeing is, yes, they work very well together. Because to me, I feel it is the, the harmonizer is about bringing the consciousness into the physical. And the wisdom is about the consciousness. And so to me, those two together. So Renard, I'm really glad that you had a great experience with that um, harmonizer wisdom ring prototype. And again, that's just, you know, it, it's a small, I think, size 10 ring. Um, Anna, while meditating, I was called to create a column of light in the planet. I'm kind of confused when I see Earth with wings of talk crossing the center and creating a column of light that goes up and down Earth. Any ideas about this connection? Um... No, you know, it's, um, I'm just happy that you followed your guidance on creating that column of light with the planet when you were doing the meditation. Um, now, Anna, are you, I see, I'm kind of confused too about the question. I'm kind of confused when I see Earth with wings of talk crossing the center and creating a column of light that goes up and down. Now, so, is that how you created that column is using the wings of talk and imagining that the wings of talk was here in the core of the earth and that there's a column of light coming up through it um for me when i was anchoring a columns of light and i was using the wings of talk um, and this is the original wings of talk um to me it seemed kind of strange too that you'd have a column of light and then where it comes to the actual wings of talk it expands out more into like a saucer shape and then it becomes that column on either side. So, you know, if that is something that trips you up in the mental, don't even envision it like that. You can actually envision the wings of talk as just a column of light and intend that that energetic comes through. Um, so, so yeah, if, um, so don't let that trip you up on the visioning of that. You can just use a column of light, um, in its simplicity and just intend that that energetics of the on the wings of talk or the wings of talk I'd go with on the wings of talk because it is bringing through that wisdom energetics um, that that comes through for it so definitely simplicity is the key but yes thank you for for doing that work um I think I lost my space here All right. Mika, are you going to continue to add new, and I, I hope I'm saying your, your name right, Mika. I am terrible with names. Yeah, I don't know why. Um, are, are you going to continue to add new prototypes to be purchased, or are the ones listed all there is? Um, no, we're actually, I have a bunch of the quantum grid, or the, you know, the quantum grid points um, here in, in this studio that I need to get listed. Um, they're everything from really miniature ones that have a ring in it to ones that have the crystals. And then there's some that we've made with the powdered shungite. Um, so there's a few of those. And, and I'm still working at um, possibly taking some of the prototype wands that we've created to get to the new wand and possibly put those up onto the prototype page too. And then just kind of as we're moving along here, we do have a few different tools that we are in the process of working with, and those will most likely get put on that prototype page as well. So it will be a going thing, um, as well as the products we have there. But this is the wisdom wand, holy smokes, we'll talk about this another time next Friday. But this is one of the, um, we have some prototypes of this 
that don't have the brass tube that we might put up there too. But you know, I just want to make sure that the prototypes that we put out are all highly beneficial and energetically sound. Um, you know, comparing the old prototype to the Wisdom Wand, they're not the same. And so sometimes with tools like that, I kind of, I am a little hesitant on even putting them on the prototype page because, you know, I only want what is, you know, holy wow to go out there anymore. Um, so anyway, we will keep adding to the prototype page. Uh, Nika, I put my original on the wings of talk in the bath, or the original wings of talk, in the bath, and it rusted a bit. Will you consider making the talk pendant epoxy coated similar to the phone tool? Then re-electroplating won't be an issue. Um, you know, Nika, that's really a thought. Thank you for, for suggesting that. And let me play with that. Um, I will try that over the weekend and start working with one and playing with that and see how it goes. The only thing about um, putting an epoxy coating on that Wings of Talk pendant would be if you wore it with any other tools, um, what happens when you put epoxy on a ring and you get a little chip or a crack in the epoxy and it, it starts to patina in that point, it gets really ugly because the because part of it is nice and bright and shiny, and there's little splotches that are just patinaed, and it really patinas once it starts to because that moisture is held in there, and then it just creeps along there between the epoxy and the copper. So yeah, no, actually, I don't think we will do that because they get really ugly if they start to get little cracks in them, which would happen if you wore with other jewelry and things. And the things about the thing about that, too, is, is that once you put the epoxy on there, we do not have the means or would want to to remove the epoxy to refinish and re-electroplate that. Um, that would be a lot of chemical and a process that we just wouldn't want to do to remove the epoxy to refinish the tool. So basically, your tool would look a lot worse in the long run if we did the epoxy on it for like the Wings of Talk pendant. Um, I do wish there was another solution to that. I really, truly do. And um, I just updated our electroplating equipment um, and solutions. And so I'm hoping that that will help a little bit with this process. Um, and we are certainly, well, Lucas, shop foreman, our wonderful silversmith, and my nephew, he is actually working at some prototypes in silver of the Wings of Talk pendants, um, solid silver. They are beautiful, but they're still prototypes, and we're still working out a lot of online physical with those. And so that is our one of our solutions, poss possible solutions to the Wings of Talk is to um, basically clear out of having to even do electroplating and just make it out of solid silver. So yeah, and that's it is that um, it used to be that the Wings of Talk has always had to be steel and then electroplated on top of that because the steel, and we've tried stainless steel too just to see if maybe we could just leave it steel, but stainless steel is, we can't really work with the stainless steel. So we're still keep going back to the whole electroplating and I know that has been an issue. So we are certainly striving to find a different way to do that and to see if we can get the silver to hold the energetics of that wings of talk because traditionally it has only been steel that could hold that energetic. But, you know, we're always stepping into new times. Um, all right. Um, Brenda, I have so many rings that I've accumulated and now can't figure out which ones they are. Any idea how I can figure this out? 
No, not really, Brenda. Um, whew, that's that's a tough one. If you would like, you can take a picture of a single ring or tool on a ruler. So set the ring or the tool on a ruler so that you're at the zero. Take a picture and send it to me, and I will see if I can help you figure out what tool that is. Because we don't have very many tools that are repeat in the same form or the same twist. We always do a different twist, a different gauge, a different size, a different cubit measure um, so that we can always tell the tools apart. But, you know, it's it's been a while and we don't have all the tools here in the studio anymore either. Like the galactic rings. I don't even know if I have some big galactic rings. I don't think I have all the sizes of the galactics here, um, the galactic ascension rings. So you know, there's a lot of tools that are that we try to save and put away into our um, museum category to save for another time. Um, but even those we don't have tagged. So it's tough to figure out which tool it is, but I, I could probably help you out with that. So just totally email me with the picture on the ruler and I'll see what I can do for you. Let's see, any chances of making miniature versions of things like the 5D Ascension Chamber, and would it hold the same energy and be as strong in the mini? Yeah, you know what? I've always envisioned having a little 5D animator, which is that really tall chamber sitting right there, the steel one. I've always envisioned having a tiny little one sitting on a desktop. Always wanted to make one of those. But as far as you know, the the pyramids, you know, and that's what we have those miniatures for. But, um, yeah, you know, we, we, we're, still, we're still brainstorming and having ideas of creating different things, more like portable chambers. As a matter of fact, we really want to create something that is like our um, SETI coil. And I think I've shown the SETI coil on here at one of our 50 Questions Fridays. Um, so basically, we like, you know, it just has a bunch of rings around the outside, and then you put a crystal in the center. And so we, we want to make something that um, 3D print a tool that can hold um, your larger practitioner rings in place to create a giant SETI coil that you can sit or stand in. Um, but as far as a miniature version for the desktop, yeah, I think that would be pretty cool too. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see. We can certainly throw that into the whole the whole mix of things here and see, you know, and let that simmer and see what comes out. So yeah, thank you for the inspiration and the ideas for sure. Um, Okay, so I think we are getting close to doing our meditation. I'm just jumping back over here to the chat side. Um, Anna, I felt the tools had a major shift around May this year. Also, have, also feel you have something coming up that's huge. However, for me, the biggest breakthrough went to a whole different level after sessions with Brenda's. Tools are great, but I guess I had too much to mess around. Yeah. Yeah, I tell you what, the tools are great, but man, it's the consciousness work. The tools are just holding the space, but when you can deep dive in, and Brenda takes you through some deep dives um, to do the work. Um, yeah. So as far as the major shifts around May, yeah, we've had some pretty major shifts in the tools that have been coming through, and... You know, and I always thought the wisdom was, you know, I was kind of thinking the wisdom might be our plateau for a little while, but I still think it's just another stepping stone. You know, we, we're moving fast and faster right now. Um, and I'll talk about some of the more tool updates here in a minute, too. Um, so Renard mentions that he found out the hard way about electroplating after submerging in citric acid. Yeah, electroplating is very, you know, electroplating is, is not very tough. And it, 
you know, the, the surface. And, you know, and I, when I plate, I, I electroplate for a very long time. We do a, an underbase of copper, you know, after we go through the electro cleaning, the acid, all of that. And then when we get to the first layer of copper, um, I put that on as thick as I can before it starts to ruin the texture. And then when I put it into the bright and shiny copper um, electroplating solution, I plate that for as long as I can before it starts to texture. So, you know, I put as thick of layers on to the plating as, as possible. Um, Oh, there's a great idea. So Anna was saying, why don't you place the wings of talk into a sealed bag for your bath? That's a fantastic idea, Anna. I never thought about that with the tools because, you know, I, I like to go to some hot springs that are like high in sulfur and other things, and they just totally destroy the tools when you take them into those public bath places, which I, you know, if I go to any communal waters, I like to take one of the tools, usually the Gaia Sphere, or at least wear a pendant. Um, so that it clears the water and putting that into a sealed bag is a fantastic idea. Thank you All right, so we're going to I guess uh, be complete with the questions here I'm going to talk a really quick minute about a couple of updates with tools and then we're going to jump into a Meditation so um, Quick drink of coffee or tea here Okay, so next week, next Friday, we're going to work with the Wisdom Wand. Um, this might be out sooner than that. Keep an eye out for it. Holy freaking buckets. This thing is amazing, um, the field that this holds and the work that you can do with it. Um, just yesterday at the studio, everybody got one of these wands and we went through and did some meditation, some work, and I taught people how to use it. Um, this to me is a game changer. So anyway, we'll be talking about this one and it should be ready here. As soon as it's ready over this next week, um, we'll put those out there. And the next 50 Question Friday, we'll be talking about these and doing the energy work with them. These are going to be 60 bucks. They are... The wisdom wand is, yeah, I, I, I could talk all day about these things. Um, but the tool that's coming out today. So if you are here live and you go to the very first um, posting on chat, I gave a link to these rings, which are the Water Wisdom Alchemist rings, as well as a coupon code. So... Let me retype the coupon code for that. And this is good for the next week because then next week we will, um, we might do something different. I always like to, um, you know, do something for those who come and attend live. Um, Let's see, so I'm just checking chat questions. Okay, so the Water Wisdom Alchemist Rings. So I do have an announcement too that the smaller um, water rings, we are discontinuing. We have a fantastic sale on those um, at or below manufacturing cost because we have so flipping many of those. We stockpiled those small rings um, Dancing with Water no longer carries the small rings. They only carry the, the home set. Um, and, you know, we they've, they've been fantastic. I mean, it was the Harmonic Creation Field Trio. Flip an amazing set of rings. Um, so you can get those for like 20 bucks off of the ring. I mean, they're, they're, it's a great, great deal. So while supplies last, but we got quite a few of those in stock right now. Um, so anyway, yeah, the small set of water rings are on clearance now because these are coming through. So with the wisdom rings, the, the larger, heavier set gauge of wisdom rings, these are the same as the um, personal set of wisdom rings, 
put in a lighter gauge and there's more to them energetically. So as far as the physical comparison, they're the same size as the home set or the, the personal set of, of alchemist rings where you have the harmonizer ring, you have the chalice ring, and you have the divine I am. But these only come in a set because these three together are bringing through that wisdom field. Um, but anyway, going back, the alchemist set is one that we saw was charging water, was physically restructuring water in like two to four hours. It used to be that any tensor ring, you know, like let's say the water rings, the golden fire water ring, it would take four to six hours for a tensor field to fully physically restructure water, bringing it to its original crystalline structure, um, you know, the hexagonal structure. Dancing with Water tells more about that, dancingwithwater.com. But um, for, for tensor fields, it would take four to six hours. So you'd always have to leave your, your water set overnight. You can never put a ring over your shower head to restructure the water because it takes four to six hours to physically restructure it. It would always clear it energetically right away, instantly. So um, the alchemist rings we were seeing, though, would restructure water in two to four hours. These, it occurs instantly. That is because this field of the wisdom, the wisdom field is bringing in all that the spirit of water is, the consciousness of water, Hedica. So this brings Hedica fully into the physical embodiment of the water. And when Hedica comes fully embodied into the water, it does the physical restructuring instantly in these fields. Flipping amazing. So we're going to do a meditation with these here in a moment. But, um, okay, so I guess I'll just talk just a quick another moment about these. Um, again, they are the alchemist rings, all three together. They come as a trio, and they will hold that energetics of the wisdom ring when they're all together, but so much more. Um, these ones are 128 for the set. Uh, we, we did our best to, which we did a really good job on our time studies to get these as, as low price as, as possible. So 128 is actually a pretty dang good deal on these two because our other small water set as a trio was 158. So we've been able to reduce our, our production rate on, on these, um, so these ones, um, and then if you are here live, you get that coupon code if you wish in the next week to get these rings at 12% off. Um, I'm really not fond of doing sales pitches. Sorry about the sales pitch. <laughs> That's what I got to do. Um, but I want to attune you all to the energetics of this ring today. We're going to go through a meditation, and we are going to bring in uh, that energetics, the consciousness, Hedica, into um, allowing Hedica to basically shift the physical body. So um, how we do this is we're also going to do another very special meditation today, which I feel is a part of something that we need to do in order to step into the zero point of the soul, the space where Let's imagine, okay, let's imagine I have a circle. That is the soul, the zero point of the soul, consciousness. Then outside of the circle are your incarnations, your experiences, all these little points, all these little dots throughout all time, backwards, forwards, through all dimensions, just aspects of you part of your soul that has incarnated or is having an experience somewhere. All your experiences take place out here. This is the zero point. This is your soul. This is only your soul, not the experiences. This is your soul and the wisdom. So let's say you have the human right here, this dot. And you have all these crazy experiences. 
All the traumas, all the beliefs, all the stuff. Experiences, good, bad, beautiful, ugly. When we do this meditation, it is our intention of coming into the zero point space, which is simply bringing ourself here. All of this stuff turns to wisdom. That's what the wisdom ring is about. It is turning experiences into wisdom. Then we have all this wisdom as we bring ourselves back into center. As we come back into center, all experiences turn to wisdom. From that point, that is where we do the work with the wisdom energetics, is when we are back to center, back to zero. Okay, so I'm going to set these rings down here. Whoops. Did I lose this? Oh, no. And I'm going to put the camera down here. And this will be your visualization for today of the wisdom rings. Let me get the camera set up here, making you guys dizzy for a moment. Shine some light on things. Okay. Here we go. So for now, just close your eyes. We're going to go into the heart space, and then we're going to connect into this field here in a moment. But for now, just close the eyes. Put your attention onto your physical heart. Breathe in that energy of the earth. Breathe in that energy of creation. Source, soul, creator, God. Bring both those together. You become a calm of light that's grounded, connected, and in the heart space. And we are a group, a container, and we all hold space for each other. So this should be simple and easy. So just trust that you are in that sacred space of the heart. And we ask that the soul bring all that you are, that zero point, into you, into the heart, aligning you throughout all time, space, dimensions, realities, incarnations, everything that the soul is in this universe. <sighs> bring it all into the here now moment, all that you are as a soul. As all of that comes into that zero point space, into that space of you, all experiences are harmonized. Now you can take a look at these three rings that are sitting here on the screen. Within this space, that is that zero point, that is that energy of the wisdom. Imagine standing within this column of rings. Just imagine yourself within that space. And just allow everything that you are to come in to center. As you bring in all that you are and all experiences, the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful, they are brought into wisdom. You don't have to experience them, relive them, judge them. Just bring them in and allow that to turn to wisdom. Now within this column, imagine that you are physically standing within this energetic field of these rings, of the water wisdom rings. And as you stand physically within this field of the water wisdom rings, that bright, column of light comes through that energetics of Hedica comes into every cell of the body throughout all the water of the body and just shifts the vibration and consciousness and memory and physical structure the pH the everything of the water in your body Maybe you feel those cool, clear waters flowing through. 
maybe a tingling. Just allow whatever is in the highest and best for you because only in the highest and best for you will occur in this process. Just your attention to your physical body and how it vibrates and shifts. If you have a pain, recognize it, smile at it, put your attention to it, don't fight it, don't feel deep into it or wonder about it. Just recognize it and allow it to shift. Beautiful. And you will know when you are complete. You are welcome to stay in this field for as long as you wish. And as you come out, if you do have a question, you are welcome to send a question here. Or if you'd like to share your experience, you are welcome to share your experience here as well. For me, the first time I did this, it lasted for about five minutes afterwards that I could just feel that cool, clear waters flowing not only within my physical body, but all around me. And coming into the zero point space is huge, as is the working with the physical, with water all the water in your body, bringing the consciousness to all the water in your body. It is here in support. That is the reason the water came to the planet in the first place, is in love and support. And this is one of the keys to shifting your physical body into a higher experience. Okay, my beautiful friends, I'm going to sign off wishing you all the most wonderful peace, joy, and abundance. Until next time.